क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी फाइव डिफॉर्मिटी ड्यू टू इंजरी ऑफ मीडियन नर्व अब दल्बो इज कॉल्ड नो वेन वी से दट मीर नर्व इंजरी अब दल्बो इट मीन्स टॉकिंग इज अबाउट द इंजरी ऑफ मीर नर्व before it innervates the flexor group of muscles of the front of forearm you know the muscles of the front of forearm they've been divided into three layers actually superficial layer middle layer and the deeper layer in the superficial layer you have pronator teres flexor carpi radialis palmaris longus and flexor carpi lanaris out of these only flexor carpi lanaris is innervated by ulnar nerve rest all of them are innervated by median nerve then the middle layer is formed by this flexor digitorum superficialis this is a muscle which takes origin from all three bones humerus radius and ulna this muscle also takes origin from the common flexor origin and the deeper layer there are three muscles flexor pollicis longus flexor digitorum profundus and pronator caudatus out of these flexor digitorum profundus is a hybrid muscle of which the lateral two tendons this is a point of importance to understand this deformity that flexor digitorum profundus the lateral two tendons for index and middle finger are being innervated by the median nerve and tendons for the ring and the little finger they innervated by ulnar nerve now the deep muscles of the front of forearm which we say are innervated by the median nerve they are actually innervated by the anterior interosseous nerve which is a deeper branch purely a motor branch of median nerve running deep inside over to the interosseous membrane and then down below when this median nerve reaches to the carpal tunnel it gives a palmar cutaneous branch which innervates the skin on the lateral two third of the palm and when it passes below the retinaculum there deep inside in the palm it innervates five intrinsic muscles of which the three muscles are of thinar eminence abductor flexor and opponens pollicis brevis as well as it innervates the lateral two lumbaricals then it also gives digital cutaneous branches for the skin overlying to the lateral three and a half digits including their nail beds on the dorsum of the digits so whatever innervation i have taught you is about median nerve including the anterior interosseous nerve that all will be lost if the median nerve is injured above to the elbow so now think about you know their antagonistic muscles there in the dorsum of the hand those are the extensor group of muscles as well as the 12 intrinsic muscles including the four lumbaricals four palmar and four dorsal interossei they are flexors of the metacarpophalangeal joints and extensors of the ip joint out of these 12 muscles 10 muscles are innervated by ulnar nerve while the first and second lumbaricals are innervated by the median nerve after knowing all these facts now think about if median nerve is injured and all the muscles i taught you are paralyzed and you are asked to close a fist so when you closing a fist right think about flexor digitorum profundus because the lateral two tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus for the index and middle finger are paralyzed so at the ip joints it is the extensor digitorum which will dominate because of the unopposed action remember flexor digitorum superficialis which was chiefly flexing the proximal ip joint that also is paralyzed while in the ring and the little finger where flexor digitorum superficialis is the, although paralyzed but they are being flexed at ip joints because of the innovation through the ulnar nerve and you know extension of the thumb is also there because of flexor pollicis longus and thinar group of muscles they are all paralyzed so at the same time extensor pollicis longus extensor pollicis brevis being innervated by the posterior interosseous nerve which is a deep branch from the radial nerve so they will dominate because of the unopposed action of flexion at these ip joint of the thumb 
so when the person is asked in such situation to close the fist you will find that he is able to flex the ip joints of the little and the ring finger but he is not able to flex the index the middle and the thumb although to a some extent middle finger may be partially flexed it may be not extended to the full extent the reason is the tendon of flexor digitorum profundus is having a webbed aponeurosis and this webbing is present between the tendons of middle ring and little finger the webbing is absent between the long tendons of middle and index finger because there's a vertical septa which reaches down between these two tendons dividing the spaces of the palm into thinar and mid palmar space so that septa passes between the two long tendons for index and middle finger and that's why remember you also have the second lumbricle as unipinnate muscle if second lumbricle would have been bipinnate just like in the sole then this vertical septa wouldn't have reached down to attach on the third metacarpal so thereby you getting to know that the long tendon the long flexor tendons for index finger are free that's why you will find much of extension at the index and the thumb but less of extension at the middle finger now this position you're seeing in this image this is called hand of benediction it's also called as benediction sign benedict sign or preacher's hand this is the type of deformity i'm talking about in median nerve injury above to the elbow or we call it as supracondylar injury of median nerve and this commonly happens even with the supracondylar fracture of the humerus this is called hand of benediction now the same deformity hand of benediction is also called by some authors as pointing index finger where the subject is asked to close the fist and as i told you he will not be able to flex the index and the thumb but as i taught you that the middle finger can be partially flexed not fully flexed and the reason i told you that because of the webbing of the long flexor tendons so because the ring and little finger are being flexed because of the innervation through the ulna nerve to flexor digitorum profundus but the tendon of middle finger which was innervated by mere nerve or the anterior tarsus nerve is paralyzed so the middle finger will not be able to easily flex but is still because of being webbed aponeurosis you don't find that the middle finger is completely extended so that's why because the middle finger is not as straight as the index finger many authors do call it as pointing index finger so ideally speaking actually for you as a student both are same deformity pointing index finger as well as hand of benediction preacher's hand this pointing index is also called as orator's hand by some authors so you finding that the index finger tends to remain straight when attempting to clasp the hand and that's why we call it as pointing index finger this is another image for hand of benediction you are seeing is this is how the hand appears where there is inability to flex the thumb the index and the middle finger while making a fist so hand appears like this in a dorsal view in a palmar view in a lateral view seen from the ulnar side that's why it's also called as preacher's hand now how to check for this median nerve injury which includes anterior and tarsus nerve injury this is a small little test as the subject to make a pinching like posture touching the tip of the index with the tip of the thumb a normal person will make this easily making a circular gap inside here 
but a person with median nerve injury will not be able to do so remember because of the paralysis of the long flexors of the thumb and the index so if you ask this person to grasp a paper a sheet between the index and the thumb he will not be able to pick up the paper with the same posture like picking up between the tip of thumb and index he will grasp the paper by using his intact ulnar nerve and that you know innovates the palmer interosei as well as adductor pollicis so here in this image you are seeing that this person is adducting the thumb to his index finger and that's the use of palmer interosei as well as adductor pollicis these muscles are innervated by ulnar nerve so thereby he is grasping the paper in this abnormal way this is a sign where you confirm that there is injury of median nerve which also includes injury of anterior interosseous nerve if it's above to the elbow another way of testing this median nerve injury is to ask the subject to make a fist by passing the digits through the interdigital clefts of both the hands grasping both the hands so when he does so you can find out that there this the thumb you are seeing is in a state of extension the index in a state of extension as well as if you see the opposite side you will find that the middle finger of the injured side is also not completely flexed this is because the index is pointing very much straight so we call it as in pointing index finger deformity but the same deformity is also called hand of benediction this is also called as preacher's hand pointing index is also mentioned as orator's finger orator's finger or orator's hand this is another image of the same test as i taught you to ask the subject to perform this to clasp both the hands with fingers passing between each other through the interdigital clefts and there you finding is that this is straight the index the thumb also is not flexed especially when you see the ip joint of the thumb and this is not completely flexed unlike the ring and the little finger you know when you check this sign hand of benediction or pointing index you should actually observe the flexion and extension at the terminal ip joint that will give you a more precise diagnosis so the distal ip joint at the index finger is extended even at the thumb the ip joint is extended so this is called the pointing index deformity so what can we write here deformity due to injury of median nerve above the elbow is called pointing index finger or hand of benediction